Hey, how's it going, guys? Thank you all so much for tuning into another video. Uh, you saw the thumbnail and you saw the title, so you already know what we're speaking about. We are speaking about the four personality types. So if you have not already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to this video so that you're notified of whenever I post another video. All right, and just to let you know on this channel, I will speak about uh, different uh, elements of real estate. Uh, I, at the moment, I'm speaking of wholesaling, uh, and but you can uh, bring this information onto a lot of other areas uh, in business and just overall understanding personality types uh, whenever you are uh, speaking with a potential seller or a client. All right, so we'll go ahead and get it started off. So the first one is a driver, okay? Now, a driver is someone that wants to run you over in the conversation. Okay, and I'm sure we've encountered those people in life, all right? So you get on the phone, they're throwing F-bombs at you, you're like, all right, just tell me the price. What, what is it? Okay, why are you calling me? What's going on? They, they come off a little rude, they come off pushy, they come off aggressive, uh, and that personality type, the way uh, that you handle them is basically just getting straight to it. It's like, all right, well, how, all right, what's, what's the price? All right, can, like, I understand that, blah, blah, but, but tell me how much are you trying to, you know, uh, what, what are you trying to offer me at my home? Then you would just uh, be logical and I'm like, hey, listen, I understand that you want a price, but without seeing the property, I cannot give you a fair assessment. I can give you whatever number on the phone, but I do have to go through these lists of questions just to make sure I understand what we're looking at, but I do need to see the property to make sense for it. And so a lot of times once you explain to them, just basically stand your ground with them. Uh, and uh, the way that I like to think about it, I really like dealing with drivers when it comes to sales, um, I remember a while ago, I was watching a video about uh, Kobe and he was explaining how he deals with, uh, he was studying this form of martial arts. Uh, basically it's called the force of the intercepting fist basically. So uh, what he would do is he would make a move to make somebody else make a move and then he would uh, adjust accordingly. Um, so that's one way of doing it. So you. Uh, would say certain things to make them react and you go in, or you would uh, use a, I forgot this form of uh, martial arts, but basically you are using their momentum against them. So as they're coming at you with something, you give a response uh, and you have them basically burn themselves out. So as you're giving them a logical answer, it's like, look, I understand that you want a price, but I need to know what repairs are need to be done. It's like, well, you, you know my house, you, you saw the house, so you should let me know. Okay, well, I, I didn't go inside your house. So I don't know what the kitchen looks like. I don't know that. So once you start doing that, all of a sudden it's like, all right, what you wanna know, man? And you go from there. Don't let them startle you. Don't yell back. Uh, just let them know like, okay, look, this is why I'm doing it. This is what it is. And if you stay calm, then eventually they'll come down as well. So that's how I like to deal with drivers and they, they may get a little frustrated because you're not matching their energy, but overall, just let them know that you're in control of this by uh, allowing them to, by, by remaining calm. But something uh, that, that's interesting with drivers as well, you, at the end of the transaction, you want them to feel like they won. All right, so in a way, it's a bit of, uh, I guess, manipulation in terms of how you're dealing with this person. Uh, so for example, say if you know that you want your offer to be at 180, okay, you're start off at, you know, 171, 260, okay? Then it'll be like, oh, no, that's that's way too low. It's like, all right, well, I mean, what makes sense for you? They'll be like, I was thinking something more along the lines of like, you know, 185. And in their mind, they're saying 185 because they know that that's probably not gonna work. So they're gonna shoot a high number you do the little dance, okay, well, I mean, where are you getting your numbers from, or blah, blah, and at the end of it, you'll probably end up going somewhere around 178 something, uh, and in their mind, they're like, whew, I got him to go from 171 all the way to 178, but in your mind, you already knew you could have gone up to 180, but you have to do the dance, and they have to feel like they pulled one on you, because that's that personality type, so that's what a driver is. All right, the second is a social person. Okay, so a social person, um, somewhat of this, this type of person when it comes to communicating with people, when it comes to sales is they like to talk. They will talk your ear off, they'll tell you about what happened last week, they'll tell you that 
they'll talk about everything and a lot of times not even about what they're talking to you about uh, or while you're speaking to them, they'll just let you know a little bit about everything. Like, oh yeah, let me tell you about my grandson. Let me tell you about this, let me tell you about that. This type of person, uh, I would say it's great to build rapport with them, but watch what you say basically, okay? So you wanna keep it light, you wanna keep it friendly, you wanna keep it fun, uh, and just speak about different things. So what I like to do to build rapport, especially once I'm at their home, uh, or if I'm talking to them on the phone, I'll choose any, I'll, I'll pick uh, something to start a conversation about. So if they're speaking and I hear a dog barking in the background, I'm like, oh, is that a dog? Yeah, oh, what, what breed is that? Oh, it's so-and-so breed. Ah, oh, interesting. Listen, I had a dog, blah, 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 or I currently have a dog, that's blah, 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 and this is that, and blah, blah, and we start talking about dogs and how great they are. Uh, and when you get to their home, you see a picture of, you know, some kids, like, oh, who are these kids? Oh, these are my grandchildren. Oh, man. So so tell me about being a grandparent. Like, what what is that like? And they're like, oh, let me tell you, it's the best, blah, blah, this and that. And you just get them just talking and talking and talking. And by the end of it, they said so much, they feel like they've known you their whole life. It's like, man, you're cool. You let me basically get a bunch of words out. They're not gonna say that. But the reason why they're gonna like you is because most people, whenever it comes to a business transaction, they want to get rid of the transaction as, as quickly as possible. But the fact that you went in there and you just let them just spill out a bunch of stuff about everything, you didn't rush them, uh, now you will have to redirect sometimes because they'll go way off and then you'll run out of time and you won't have the amount of time that you need to speak about what you need to speak about. But redirect them by uh, saying, okay, well, if they're talking about their grandchildren, they're going on with this and that, then you can go uh, about the kitchen. It's like, oh, okay, well, this kitchen here, it looks like, uh, you know, though it's not damaged or anything, it would have to be updated. Uh, and then you start talking about the house again and as far as uh, the repairs that you're gonna be doing. So let them talk, let them talk, let them talk. And then at the end, then you'll be able to bring it home uh, later on with an offer at the end of you looking over the home. So the key to these folks is just having long conversations with them. It's gonna take a long time uh, to deal with these folks. Now, the next person is the opposite of that, okay? The analytical person. All right, now this, the analytical person is someone that deals a lot with numbers, facts, uh, and they wanna get straight to the point, okay? So you, you're speaking to this person, they're like, all right, so uh, what do you wanna offer? Okay, well, I would like to see the property so I can give you uh, an offer that would make sense, because uh, of course, I could just go off of what you're saying over the phone, but by the time I get there, uh, though things may not be damaged, they may need to be updated, uh, and I just need to make sure I have a, a, a proper uh, foundation for the offer that I'm gonna be given. It's like, okay, that makes sense. So not a lot of emotion, not a lot of jokes, not a lot of whatever. So whenever you come, um, you give them an offer uh, and they were like, okay, so what did you base those numbers off of? Okay, well, I need to do X amount of repairs, this and that. And uh, of course there's this fee, that fee, you know, closing costs, agent. Uh, costs and all these um, other factors. And of course, we wanna make sure that we're staying in business. So uh, we have to get at a price point to where it would make sense for us. Uh, and of course, uh, make sense for you as well. Is that okay? Now, these folks, a lot of times don't expect them to make a decision right then and there, all right? Now, of course, you're going to be asking if there's any other decision makers uh, that's there, but these folks, they're very slow to move. All right, now it's not to say that they won't say yes, but they are very, very slow to move. Uh, and they will, uh, once they make a decision, they made a decision. But the the key with these folks is just following up uh, and don't come off too gimmicky. Don't come off with a bunch of, you know, over promising, like don't, don't, don't add a lot of flash. Don't try to joke with them too much, build rapport, but don't go in there thinking you're gonna have a three hour conversation with this type of person. All right, this person is just like, all right, just let me know what was going on. This person is probably gonna be shopping around. They're probably gonna be doing this and that. And you wanna differentiate yourself by giving details and facts uh, and explain the benefits of working with you. So if it's time, say, okay, we can close in a couple weeks. Uh, and you wanna be calm with the, the way that you're approaching everything because they're not moved by the antics like, oh man, listen, so what's stopping you from signing it right now? Okay, so if you come with a bunch of energy, it's like, mm, nah, I'm good. The analytical person is not moved by all your, your spirit fingers, right? 
they're not moved by you uh, being loud and being aggressive and all these things. It's like they're very, very analytical person. They're gonna think through uh, this thing and really weigh out the pros and cons. Uh, and the more you can help them through that process, then the more likely you'll be able to uh, get a deal with them. All right, so the next person is a social conscious person. All right, now this person, uh, I, I'd say they're probably my second favorite to work with. Uh, I, my favorite is the, the driver, and the second is a social conscious. So the social conscious person is someone who really cares about what happens to the property. Okay, so it is important for them to um, really have an understanding for what you're gonna do to the home. So there's some folks I'll speak to, uh, and I'm like, oh yeah, well, you know, we wanna make sure that we, uh, we're gonna be flipping the property or we're gonna be having it as a rental. Uh, and they may say, hmm, I don't know about having it as a rental. Uh, you know, I don't want my neighbors to be upset. And you know, renters, they don't take care of the property. I would much rather have this house sold uh, to someone that's gonna be uh, living uh, in the property. So, I mean, is that something that you could do? Like, they'll, they'll ask things like this. Okay, well, what do you plan on doing with this? I mean, this it's a beautiful color. I mean, are you gonna keep it the same color? I don't want, you know, you know X, Y, and Z to happen uh, to this house. And uh, yeah, my, my kids grew up here. Like, they have an attachment and they care about what's going on. So the conversation shouldn't just be about numbers. It should be about how well you're gonna be taking care of this house and how whenever you make this house beautiful, you'll send them a picture, you'll let them know uh, what's going on with the home uh, and you're gonna keep them involved in the process. Uh, and you wanna just speak to these people and just make them feel comfortable. Uh, don't make them feel unsafe because they're probably getting rid of this house or selling this house, not because they want to, but maybe because they have to. Um, and they probably have a lot of sentimental uh, attachments to it. So you wanna make sure that you let them know uh, that you really do care about the property and this isn't just house number or whatever. This is their house, this is their baby and they're handing it over to you. So you wanna make sure your language is uh, going based off of those things as well. So uh, just to recap everything that we spoke about as far as the personality types, it'll be number one, the driver, they wanna run over you. Number two, the social person, they will talk your life away, uh, but make sure you uh, have it contained uh, in a package to where it makes sense. Number three, the analytical person. Uh, that person is super detail oriented and they will make their decision based off fact and benefit. Uh, and a lot of times there's very little emotion uh, involved. And also the social conscious person, they really care about what happens to the property and they have an emotional attachment to what happens to it. So uh, those are the personality types. Uh, if you found value in this video, go ahead and like this video. Uh, and subscribe so that you're notified of whenever uh, I am posting another video. Uh, and if you would like to get a free purchase agreement, go ahead and uh, view the information below. Uh, and also a lot of the topics that I go over in these videos are in my ebook, Wholesaling 101, Your First Step. So if you like uh, access to that ebook, go ahead and click the link below and there's details of that as well. Thank you all so much for watching the video uh, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.